Hello, I'm Jeannie Caldwell and welcome to In His Presence. We're taking a trip down memory lane today. Over the next several weeks, I'm going to share some classic In His Present episodes with you. Today we begin with my dear friend, Kathy Duplantis. She came on the show in 2007 to share a powerful teaching on divine connections. Kathy is the wife of Dr. Jesse Duplantis and an anointed teacher of the gospel. She's dedicated to living by faith and she'll inspire you to do the same. So let's take a look back as Kathy Duplantis shares her message on divine connections. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you, Jean. So, so glad to have you. So good to be here. I know you've got some wonderful things to share, and uh, mm -hmm. you're a blessing to the body of Christ as well as your husband. Oh. And I just want you to know I'm happy to have you, and we're Thank happy you. to have you. Everybody Thank you. here. And uh, so let's talk about this divine connections that you've written or that you, you've, you've uh, shared a lot of places. And uh, one of the points you stress is teaching that God connects us on purpose for His purpose. You want to tell us about that? Yes, Jeannie. You know, I believe that's really true. God spoke that to my heart, and it's so real that He connects us on purpose for His purpose. And I believe that unless we find those divine connections, because I believe divine connections should be recognized mm -hmm. and honored and then nurtured. And once we recognize those that God has put in our path to connect us with, then both of us, all of us together, are propelled to a higher place wow. spiritually. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you what, I recognize the divine connections in our life. In fact, you and Happy, yeah. Jesse and I consider you a divine connection in our life. Mm -hmm. We value you, we honor you, and many, many times you've spoken wisdom mm -hmm. into our life. And I believe that if you honor the people, if you, when you honor someone, you can receive from them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't respect them, you're not gonna listen to what they say. That's true. But because Jesse and I respect you and Happy, we, you know, we see what God has done in your life through this network, through the church, mm -hmm. and, and we, we respect that, and we, we, tr we treasure all that God has put into you, and um, because of that, I've, we've benefited. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I remember getting on the phone with you and calling, Deanie, what about this? You know, because <laughs> we started the church about 10 years ago, and we have wonderful pastors, but occasionally they'll come to me and ask me things, or. You know, we work together as a yeah. team. We're divinely connected. But I respect what God has done through your life, and so I'll call you, and you're so open and honest. You say, Kathy, this is what you ought to do. <laughs> and it's worked, yeah, you know, and or Happy has done the same thing for Jesse and I. And mm -hmm. We love well, divine true. connections. It does work. Well, when we're connected with people, uh, you say that faith longs to hook up with mm -hmm. faith. Tell That's us right. about that. Well, I really got the whole revelation on this when I was rereading the Bible around Christmas time many years ago, mm -hmm. and I saw again for the first time how important it was for Mary and Elizabeth to connect. Mm -hmm. How Mary was hearing the, what God was doing in the life of Elizabeth, her cousin, and the angel told Mary, for nothing with God shall be impossible. Talking about an old woman. Yeah bearing a child yeah. in her old age. And although it was an impossible thing in the natural, here she was about to do something that was impossible. Well, Mary was getting the same, uh, basically the same assignment to do the impossible. So when she heard about someone else who had the same assignment, the Bible says that with, after the angel left her with haste, she went to the hill country of Judea to visit Elizabeth, her cousin. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was, important, so vital that they connect together physically because when they got together physically, something happened in the realm of the spirit mm -hmm. because Mary saluted Elizabeth and the moment she, heard, she spoke something, the Bible says that the baby John the Baptist leaped in the womb of Elizabeth. And so but when that happened, Elizabeth began to say some things and then Mary prophesied and said things. I believe that when we connect with people that have a like precious faith, that have a similar calling, that are just as passionate about the Bible and what God has called them to do. When we find those people, when we recognize those people that God puts in our path, and then we honor that and we say, you know, God has called us to work together, or God, you know, maybe you're a partner with a ministry, maybe that's your, pa God calls you to a certain church and you recognize, that's my pastor. Well, you connect with that church. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, God is able to impart deep things into your life and then you, something happens 
you know, it's like a percolator. Something goes on in the realm of the spirit, and then you speak out of your heart what God is doing. And that's how God gets his word in the earth. You know, he's, the Bible says that he won't do anything unless he reveal it first to his servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe with brother, brother Kenneth Copeland spoke many years ago that you are the prophet of your own life. And when God speaks truths to you, you have a responsibility to speak it out. Well, Mary and Elizabeth began to speak out things prophetically that they didn't even, I don't think they fully comprehended what they were saying, but by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost, they spoke things and declared things, and that was vital to getting John the Baptist and Jesus here to the earth, mm -hmm. part of God's great plan. So God connects people on purpose yeah. for His purpose. For His purpose. That is so good. <laughs> I told you I, I love like it. that. <laughs> I like that. It's so true. Well, you know, it's also interesting that uh, where Mary and Elizabeth are concerned, mm -hmm. they had to see one another. Mm -hmm. The tangible touch and touching one another opened up the prophetic word that was in them. Uh, that's interesting to it me. It is true. That's it's, another level there. You it know. really is. And I heard a friend of mine say something one time that God will not reveal something to you that He has already re revealed to someone that you are in covenant with now. I think it's God's plan for us to get together. Oh, yeah, I do and too. not be because so too. many people will be isolated. You know, television's important and it's great, but some people just want to sit back and be by themselves. But it's God's plan for us to hook up, hook up. with a local church, to yeah. hook up together with other believers, because together we have the fullness of His plan and the fullness of His vision. I know when I get together with people like you and Happy and you know, our friends, and we get together on our motorcycle vacations, yeah. or other uh -huh. friends that I have, we both all are so passionate about the gospel. That's right. And when we get together, somebody will say this, and it'll stir up another one to, oh, yeah, God's talking with me. And I'm telling you, we have to basically interrupt each other. Yeah. If you don't interrupt your stuff, <laughs> your, each other, when we're in our group, you're not going to talk. Yeah. Especially when, when I live with a man like Jesse, yeah. if I don't interrupt, I don't get to talk. <laughs> so it may not seem polite, but we just get in there. Sometimes we're all talking at once, but we're pro being prepared by the Spirit That's true. to a place That's true. because we have to be speaking something if we our future has to be spoken before it can ever begin to come to pass. That's true. Open yeah. your mouth and yeah. prophesy. <laughs> well, how can divine connections be honored? Well, they're honored basically by uh, recognizing them. I think about this Shunammite woman, yeah. how she recognized Elisha, how God was using Elisha and she recognized him as a man of God, and when she honored him, well, what did, what did she do? She met his physical needs. She built that broom. Yeah. Every time he came by, she constrained him. Please come in. I want to feed you. I have a, a room. She prepared a special room for yeah. him, mm -hmm. and she honored him in that way and met his physical needs because she, and really when she was honoring Elisha, she was honoring the God, or honoring the anointing of God that was in him. And when she did that, it opened up her future. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think she had that as her motive. She was just pure before God because she wanted to honor that person because mm -hmm. she recognized that God was using, using him. And, uh, but, but the result was, was beneficial to her because I believe the divine connections must be mutually beneficial. I do too. You know, I mean, it can't be a one-way street. No, it can't be. You know, if you're speaking life into someone and you're constantly ministering to them, it's a spiritual spiritual law, I believe, that you should sow back into that ministry or that, that teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think you, and Paul even said, if I give a few spiritual, shouldn't I reap a few things in the natural or of the physical? So it's, and, and I remember the, the prophets in the old days when Saul was looking for his daddy's donkeys. They would not go to the man of God unless they brought a gift. You know, you weren't paying for it, but it was a spiritual thing. Yeah. It's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. It's not a one-way street. God gives us uh, uh, provision, and He gives us seed, and that's our responsibility to sow. He directs us where to sow, mm -hmm. and then that connection brings back harvest to us. He yeah, says, isn't that wonderful? Yeah, He says He'll open <laughs> up the windows wonderful. of heaven. <laughs> yeah. And so you connect basically to heaven with your tithe. Yeah. You connect yeah. with heaven with your giving. And so it, it's, it's everywhere in the Bible. I mean, we can go on for days talking about this thing. <laughs> but it's the truth. Yeah, and that's it how can, you honor yeah. those connections. You, awesome. if, it's, if it's a teacher, if it's a ministry, of course you sow. Like it, if it's your church, you tithe, and that's where you tithe because that's where you're giving. That's where you're being fed. And the result is that, that God opens up the windows of heaven for you. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Well, tell us uh, about your family and the Solstrans. Is that their name? Uh-huh. 
Tell us about your connection there. Well, in our home church, you know, Covenant Church, there in the New Orleans area, we started it in 1997, and it's a, a powerful church. But you know, when we began the church, God spoke to us that we weren't to be the pastors, that he had a pastor in mind. And so Jesse had known this family for years. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, when he was just a teenager, uh, the, Betty Solstrand's father was the first person that he respected. In fact, his mama would make him go to youth camps and he didn't want to go and he'd play his guitar and he, he the people said, would, would criticize him and say, who look at this little guy? He thinks he's Elvis Presley because he had so much, you know, <laughs> he'd move and they'd be critical of that. But this one pastor, Betty Solstrand's dad, would, would encourage him because other people would go and unplug his amplifier. Jesse, uh, Betty's dad would plug it back in and dance along when Jesse would mm -hmm. play. And he always respected him. And I remember when I didn't know anything about the gospel and Jesse and I were married. We were both heathens when we got married. <laughs> and uh, he said he didn't want to marry anyone, any girls in the church. He didn't want anything to do with God. So he married somebody who had never even read the Bible. He thought he was safe. But I remember when I, he would talk about, he says, the only person I never want to meet while I'm out here in the world is Brother Garrison. You know, that's actually Alton Garrison's dad. Betty, Gar Betty was Betty Garrison Solstrand because he respected him so much. Mm -hmm. He didn't want him to see what he was doing. He didn't care about his mom and dad knowing what he was doing, but he didn't want this man. For some reason, he honored him. He, you know, he respected him. Anyway, that's the connection. So years later, when Jesse started preaching or God called him to preach, he didn't have a place to preach and he quit his job at Shell because God told him to go full time. You know, he'd preached occasionally here and there, but his job prevented him from going more. He had no meetings, but God told him to stop and go out in the full time ministry. This was 1978. And he looked at that little phone on the wall. It was a little yellow phone. And he looked at it and he commanded it to ring in the name of Jesus because he wanted some meetings. Mm -hmm. The phone rang and it was Brother Garrison. And he says, I'm having a youth meeting tonight and I don't have a speaker. The one I had backed out, not tonight, on this certain day, I think it was in a few weeks to come, and the, the speaker uh, backed out or something like that. He says, would you come? He says, let me check my calendar. <laughs> I think it was that week, actually. He says, yeah, I'll come. And so he went, and he spoke, and that, that same night, I mean, they had like 10 different pastors that all wanted him for meetings. He mm -hmm. booked up right away, and then the next night, there was a Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship, and and uh, the person that was supposed to play for that backed out and called Brother Garrison and said, do you have anybody that you could recommend? He says, he's sitting right here in my living room. He'll be there. And so he did, and God continued to open up more meetings. Mm. So God divinely connected us with that family. And so then later in 1979, almost, what was that, 10 years later, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he, we were led to open the church, and Jesse had spoke at, at uh, Betty's husband David's church in Dallas for t many years. And uh, found, said, so they, we knew them well. In fact, they were on our board. And Jesse said, well, if there's any pastor that would speak, that, would be, that I'd want to pastor this church would be David. And so when we shared with them the vision, they said, uh, well, um, I would like to be considered for that position. And we said, it's yours. <laughs> it was that easy. Yeah. They came in and started the church, and it's been a wonderful relationship, a divine yeah. connection a divine that God connection. connected our families from years ago to get together. And today, we're working together, reaching people, changing lives, one that soul at a time. That is so wonderful. Well, you know, the Bible uh, talks about examples of divine connections. Mm -hmm. And I'd like for you to share some of those divine connections with our audience today. Well, yeah, of course. And it's in addition to Mary and Elizabeth, you know, and we talked about Elisha and, and the Shunammite woman, it, they're all over the Bible. Moses and Joshua, of course, were connected by God on purpose for his purpose. Mm -hmm. Peter and uh, Cornelius were connected. Paul and Barnabas connected to, with God, no, of course, Jesus and his disciples. He connected yeah. with those 12. And then he told each one of us to go into all the world and yeah. preach the gospel. Yeah. And so God connects us. There are so many examples, especially in the Bible, about those divine connections that we can learn by example. And when Paul was in, a, in prayer, he was praying and, and God spoke to him that there would be a man named, that he would have to go and speak to. He's Cornelius was praying. So sometimes we're in different parts of the earth, but God will speak. Sometimes they're right there in your, in your neighborhood. Sometimes they're, they're just across the street. Yeah. But God will speak to each one of us, and it's our, our opportunities are there to connect. And when we do, I'm telling you, things happen. I mean, we didn't know you years ago, then all of a sudden, remember, we connected. Oh, yeah. And we've benefited, each one of us have benefited from benefited our, our sure. relationship, yeah. because of our relationship. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. 
Well, uh, you share uh, a joke <laughs> at your own expense about being a blind, the dumb blind jokes, you know, which a lot of blinds are not dumb. <laughs> but uh, share some of that with us. Well, you know, I feel like it's so important that we recognize that it, we have to connect with people that understand and get it. You know, mm -hmm. so often we're surrounded with people that'll try to pull us off course. And so this, and, and they don't understand, they don't get to have the big picture, basically. So I, I just love it when you connect with people that, I know, my sister and I are really connected. I mean, she's my executive secretary, and when we t get together, I don't even have to finish my sentence. Sometimes I just have to look at it. She says, I know what you're talking, I know what you're thinking, and we, and we connect, and we get things done. I call us two ox equally yoked. Isn't that wonderful? Because <laughs> we work together mm -hmm. and we get a lot of things done, but it's important, you know, you don't want to connect with people that don't get it. Blonde joke is that perfect example because I, I heard, heard the story about these two blonde girls. In fact, I feel like I can tell the story because I'm blonde yes. <laughs> right now. In fact, I, it's color. It's it, I have my, my hair is colored, and Jesse's always talking about how I'm, uh, we're the same age, but I, I don't look <laughs> it because I color my hair. But I tell them, look, my roots are dark. That's right. <laughs> and my family doesn't gray early. His does. But I was blonde as a girl growing up. But anyway, uh, so I guess I qualified. I can tell this joke. But it's, it story tells about these two blonde girls that were walking along both sides of a bank of a river. And one girl had lived there all her life and then another one had just come to the area. And so they're walking along each side of this river and hollering back and forth at each other and talking about things. And, and after a while, the new girl talks to the girl who had lived there all her life and said, uh, how do I get to the other side? And the, the, the girl who had lived there all her life looks at her kind of like she's stupid and said, what do you mean? You're already on the other side. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she didn't get it, you know. So when the girl wanted to get together with her, and she says, you're on the other side. So she, this girl was just dumb. She's one of those dumb blondes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we don't need to connect with people who don't get it. Yeah, that's right. You know, we right. need to connect with people who understand the word, who are passionate about the word, and find those people and spend time with that, those types of people, because together we're going to go somewhere. Right. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to take a break right here, and when we come back, I'll tell you how you can get an audio CD of this powerful teaching from Kathy DePlanis, so don't go away. All I could think to say was, get it out of the street. In fact, that was the last thing I remember saying. The next thing I remember was being put into an ambulance on a stretcher. I had absolutely no fear, for I felt God's presence. The doctors wanted to put three rods in my back to support my vertebrae column, but I chose not to have the surgery. I knew in my heart that God would supernaturally take care of me. Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness is a book about Jeannie Caldwell's real life encounters with God. She shares them with you in the hope that your faith and trust in a loving Heavenly Father will increase. To order the book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, call 800-264-2525 or visit our website at vtntv.com. For those of you just joining us, uh, with me today is Kathy Duplantis, the wife of Dr. Jesse Duplantis, and she's sharing with us a powerful message on divine connections. And I want you to be able to get this CD for yourself. So here's how you can visit their website at jdm.org and click on bookstore. The cost is only $7. or call their offices at 985-764-2000. Uh, Amen. Now let's get back to this wonderful message with Kathy DePlanis. Thank you. This has been so exciting. Well, <clears throat> tell us uh, what should stir you when you have uh, a divine connection? What do you need to look for to stir you? Well, I believe that, that people that value the Word of God, like I had said before, that's, that'll stir you up. In fact, sometimes you're, you just basically have to position yourself. I know that I've been at a place where I've said, I need to get to that meeting. 
Yeah. I need to get to that minister's conference. Right. And you recognize the Spirit of God will move you and you know, there'll be oppositions. Things will come to pro try to pull you off track, but you have to be determined to get where God wants you to be. Right. Sometimes it's reading a certain book. Sometimes it's tuning into a broadcast. Sometimes it's getting it physically to that place. Mm -hmm. And when you are, I mean, you're all, you're, you connect. That's what you do. You stir up yourself to do what you're supposed to do and you position yourself. In fact, and then when the anointing goes forth, you're going to be pulling, pulling upon the Spirit of God on the person that's speaking, and God will speak to your, mm -hmm. to your heart. Mm -hmm. And you're going to hear what you need to hear. And you'll be stirred up, and you'll be, that's Excited. when pe many people will receive their commission. They'll receive their direction, mm -hmm. receive confirmation of what God has called them to do. Or maybe they just need to be encouraged to get back on track. Uh, years ago, I preached another message called uh, Beware of the Dream Killers. And so it's, you know, there's so many people that would want to kill your dream and stop God's plan for your life. But there's others that want to speak life into your dream. Mm -hmm. And I believe many of us need to have that mouth to mouth resuscitation basically yeah, from yeah. God's mouth to someone else's mouth, maybe into your own heart so that it can come out of your mouth again. Mm -hmm. Because God's word was written so that it would be spoken and it was spoken so that it would be written. And so when we speak what God's word has said, it transforms not only our lives, but everybody else's yeah, life. Praise be to God. It, it stimulates so, you. <laughs> yeah, so would that be considered the people who will tear you down? Well, you also have to recognize those that will try to tear you down and pull you off course because that, that's equal. I mean, you can't, uh, we can't always isolate ourselves. All of us will be impacted in one way or another for people that will tear us down. And a lot of us grow up with parents that say, you'll never do anything, you call, Rick, you know, you're stupid. And there are parents who do that to their kids. They're always yeah. criticizing mm -hmm. them. Sometimes your parents are wonderful and you go to school and there are other kids that will tell you ugly things and they'll, those are bad connections. Sometimes we cannot totally isolate. In fact, most of the time we won't be able to isolate ourselves from those bad connections, but they need to be recognized. So you can't allow them to pour into you. You need to spend more time around people and. Uh, around the Word, in the Word, so that you can be built up. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of uh, Winston Churchill. I read a story yes. about him. Yes. How when he was growing up, you know, he had a wonderful nurse who, you told me she was a Christian woman, yeah. and she would speak into his life. She must have built him up so yes. strong, yes. because when he went to school, this head schoolmaster told him that he was worthless, that he would never amount to anything. But he wouldn't listen to that bad connection. He listened to what had already been put in him by that nurse, mm -hmm. apparently. And so here, uh, years later, when he came back to this school, they asked him to speak, give the commencement address. And he was at this school where they had talked bad to, about him. But then years later, you know, here he had become prime minister of England. He had become, uh, he had been uh, issued, given the Nobel Prize for Literature for writing a book on the English speaking peoples of the world. So they expected him to say some great big speech. And he only spoke seven words to those young men. He said, young men, never, never, never give up. See, it was a bad connection while he was at that school. If he would have recognized it, I mean, if he would have listened to that vo connection instead of what God had already been speaking mm. to his life, he wouldn't have been had the impact on the world that he did. Yeah. But uh, we should never, never give up and That's believe right. the best. Believe what God has said. Believe your vision. Believe the dream that God has given to you. Well, why would the devil want wrong connections in our life? Well, because he wants to kill the kill dream, the dream mm -hmm. stop God's plan ultimately from coming to pass. You know, he did that to Eve. Yes. Eve was in a perfect situation, a perfect place, but yet the devil made her dissatisfied with where she was. And he spoke words of doubt. Why? Because he wanted to stop God's plan. And many of us today, I mean, we sometimes we walk around, I don't even know why I'm aggravated. You may have heard yourself say that. Well, it's the enemy trying to make you dissatisfied or aggravated. Instead of listening to that, go into the Word and, and, and if you have, read the Psalms if you don't know where else to go. Yes, you'll yes. be lifted up and after a while true. you'll be rejoicing and praising the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's so true in, in the Psalms because David wrote so many of those Psalms and he just went through more things than we ever thought about. <laughs> he did. In you fact, know. one of my favorite ones to read is, I think it's Psalms 103 when he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Basically, he's talking to himself. Yes. Your, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So he's telling your soul, body, mind, you better listen to this. God's got some great benefits. That's right. Bless the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, uh, how can you benefit from a true divine connection? Well, uh, we benefit by uh, 
like, like I was saying, we speak uh, life into the words, but we listen and we obey it. We recognize it. We honor it. And then we're nurtured because you don't want to just hear it one time. When I'm, when I'm around you and happy, I don't like just one time. We want to do it again and again. Yeah. We want to get together right, because you right. speak the word. Happy is mm -hmm. such an, an anointed teacher. You know, I, I listen to him and his messages. I've heard him every year at the ministers' conference. Mm -hmm. We get together with other people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it speaks life to us and we benefit from that. And you know, when you get a benefit that you like, you go back. That's true. You like that overflow. Well, how can someone get off track and how do you get them back on tra track? And we've only got a couple of minutes here. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us real quickly? Well, you know, I think the key is listening to the Holy Ghost I and spending too. time personally. Mm -hmm. At first, the bottom line is we first connect, get connected with God. And the way we get connected with God is we get born again. And once we're born again, we accept Jesus as our Savior. We have the right connection with heaven. And then God wants us to connect on this, this other level here on earth. And so when, when, we, when we do that, he, he brings people in our path. We're faithful to go to church. We establish uh, divine connections with friends and prayer partners. And we, we're faithful to read our Bible. We connect with God on a daily basis. And then he brings those people in our path that we are to connect with. And it's not always just for our benefit. Sometimes it's for other people's benefit. Mm, sure. But you know, even when you give out, you're fed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know exactly. that's true. I do, mm -hmm. I do. Well, we want to tell you one more time how to contact uh, the ministry of uh, Jesse and Kathy Duplantis, and uh, we have it on your screen there. And you can uh, write them, call them, and uh, click onto the bookstore, and the cost is only $7 for this excellent tape on Divine Connections. And uh, I would recommend you get it. It's a wonderful tape, and we're just absolutely just hitting it on the surface here. But uh, you'd be so blessed if you'll just get it. And um, we got 30 seconds. Is there anything you want to tell them? Well, stay connected. Keep watching VTN. Watch all your broadcasts. Get in your Bible every day. Stay connected to God, and He will connect you with those that will impart vision to your life, and y'all will both be propelled to a higher place. Hallelujah. I like that. Always remember, in His presence is fullness of joy. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 22007, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. Or email her at JeannieCaldwell at VTNTV.com. To order a DVD of today's program, call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. Join us next time as we meet In His Presence.